témoignage. Bonjour Église, Emmanuel. Je m'appelle Madame Gauguin Lydi et le monsieur à côté de moi, c'est mon mari. Nous venons de la République du Bénin. Pull of God, she says Emmanuel. Pull of God, Emmanuel. Yes, she says her name is Lydia and the man standing next to her is her husband and they are coming from the Republic of Bénin. Nous bénissons le Seigneur, nous rendons grâce au Dieu de prophète Tibi Joshua qui a fait une merveilleuse chose dans notre vie. She says they want to, she says they want to thank the God of Prophet Joshua for the wonderful thing he has done in their life. Oui, tout a commencé quand on s'est mis ensemble en tant qu'un couple et puis j'ai été confronté à un problème d'enfantement et puis j'ai été et j'étais tombé enceinte pour la première fois et il s'est avéré que Et cette grossesse-là était, était une grossesse extra utérus. She says everything started when she got married to her husband. She said she had a problem of getting pregnant. And eventually she got pregnant and it happened that the pregnancy was an atopic pregnancy. It was outside the womb. Donc uh, je devais me faire opérer de toute urgence ce qui a été fait. Maintenant, après l'opération, on s'est confié à un gynécologue qui nous a révélé après des analyses que j'avais des kisses ovariens au niveau de mes deux ovaires. She says because of the fact that she had an atopic pregnancy, she had to be operated and the baby was brought out of her stomach and she lost the baby. Eventually, she went to the hospital and she met a gynecologue and she was also diagnosed with ovarian cyst. Et puis après ça, il nous avait dit aussi que comme j'étais une femme de fa- de rhesus négatif, on devrait m'injecter une injection après l'opération, ce qui avait été oublié par les médecins. Donc ça sera difficile pour moi de retomber enceinte. So it was why she was with the gynecologist that it was discovered that she had a, a, a resource factor negative. And because of that, she was supposed to be injected within 42 hours of delivery of the first baby to enable her to conceive next time. But that was not done. That, it would be, that means it would be difficult for her to get pregnant again. Donc on faisait face à ce défi quand nous avons appris qu'il y avait un service de délivrance à la Squan l'année dernière. Et puis on était venu. She says they were battling that and they learned that there will be a healing and deliverance service here at the Snapchat of Onations last year and they decided to come. Pull of God, put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. Donc quand on était venu, nous avons eu l'opportunité d'être placé en ligne de prière et puis l'évangéliste nous avait touché, on avait prié pour nous. Par la grâce de Dieu, Quand on était retourné dans notre pays, j'ai constaté en mois d'avril que j'étais enceinte. She says when she was here at the, at the Snap Church of One Nation, she was placed on the prayer line and an evangelist prayed for her. And when they got back, she discovered on the month of April that she was pregnant. On our screen is the video where she received the touch of the evangelist. Full of God, put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. <laughs> maintenant, s'il vous plaît, montrez-nous votre grossesse et dites-nous vous êtes enceinte de combien de mois maintenant Yes, that's the woman showing us that she's pregnant. People of God, you can do better. Put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. We can see some documents that have been displayed. Could you tell us what story do they tell? Nous pouvons voir quelques documents qui ont été mis en évidence. Dites-nous quelle histoire ils sont en train de raconter. Oui, ici, c'est quand j'avais eu une grossesse extra. C'est ça qui a été notifié ici que j'avais une GU. There she showing us that that was where the medical report that indicates that she had an atopic pregnancy. Ici, c'est quand on m'avait détecté des kisses au niveau de mes deux ovaires, des kisses ovariens. 
He says, on the other medical report, that was when she was diagnosed with ovarian cyst on her two ovaries. And the last medical report shows that now she is pregnant and in good health. People of God, put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. Dites-nous, comment est-ce que le fait de ne pas avoir un enfant depuis votre mariage, comment est-ce que ça vous a affecté? Tell us, how did the not having a child since your marriage, how did it affect your life? Et ça m'avait affecté psychologiquement et j'étais chaque fois animé d'un sentiment de honte dans mon entourage, mais je rends grâce à Dieu. She says this problem caused her a lot of pain. It affected her psychologically, psychologically and she was always overwhelmed with a feeling of shame. But today, she is giving all glory to God. Et maintenant, dites-nous comment vous sentez maintenant que vous êtes enceinte. Je suis très heureuse et je rends toute gloire à Dieu. Merci Seigneur. Pour le bienfait de ceux qui nous écoutent, dites-nous vous êtes enceinte de combien de mois? For the benefit of those listening to us, tell us you are pregnant. How many months gone are you? Actuellement, je suis enceinte de sept mois. Full of God, put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. She says she's seven months pregnant, all to the glory of God. Let's listen to what the husband has to say. Écoutons votre mari. Bonjour, bienvenue à la Reine de la Liberté. Présentez-vous, dites-nous votre nom et partagez avec nous votre magnifique témoignage. Peuple de Dieu, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Je m'appelle Paul Gauguin. La charmante femme qui se tient à côté de moi, c'est ma femme. He says his name is Mr. Paul and the charming woman that is seated next to him is his wife. Nous bénissons le Dieu de prophète Yves Joshua et de Maman Evelyne Joshua. Un Dieu magnifique en sainteté, digne de louange. Il est le même hier, aujourd'hui et éternellement. He says we glorify the God of prophète Yves Joshua and the God of Pastor Evelyn Joshua, a holy God, a God worthy of all praise. Nous sommes là pour témoigner de la bonté de ce Dieu dans notre vie. Comme l'a dit ma femme, elle a résumé tout ce que nous avons enduré de 2021 à aujourd'hui. So he says he he's here to return the glory to God and share his testimony. Like his wife already said, she gave a summary of everything they had been through since 2021 up to this present day. Oui, effectivement, quand on s'est mis ensemble comme un couple, nous avons eu de difficultés. Elle a eu de difficultés à concevoir. Et pour la première fois qu'elle est tombée enceinte en 2022, c'était une grossesse extra utérus. So she said, he says that when he got married to his wife, together they had a challenge, they had difficulties in getting his wife to conceive. And when she finally conceived, it was an atopic pregnancy. Ce que j'aimerais clarifier à ce niveau, c'est que au cours de la grossesse, quand on a été à l'hôpital pour, pour les soins et que le docteur a révélé que c'est une grossesse extra utérus, elle avait du mal au niveau de son ventre. He says he would like to clarify something. He, he said during the pregnancy, when he took his wife to the hospital and the, the doctor discovered that it was an atopic pregnancy, his wife was having a severe pain at her stomach. Elle qui a des douleurs au niveau du ventre. Et le docteur a dit que le fœtus s'est déjà décomposé, pourri dans le ventre au niveau de l'abdomen. Elle marchait correctement. Ça a montré la Grand, la, la main puissante de l'Éternel dans notre vie. So he said that when she was feeling this difficulty, the doctor went further to review that the fetus had already began decomposing in the stomach and she was going through a lot of pain. He says this fact alone shows the power of God in his life. Les aides soignantes qui étaient là se plaignaient pour notre cas. Ils disaient entre eux qu'elle va mourir maintenant. Elle disait ça même dans nos oreilles, que ma femme va mourir maintenant. He says the nurses that were there to assist the doctors, they were complaining about the particular case they had to attend to. They were even murmuring and they even had to whisper it to their hearing that, don't worry, she will die very soon. 
peuple de Dieu, par la gloire de l'Éternel, elle a subi l'opération sain et sauf. Full of God, he says, to the glory of God, she underwent an operation and it was safe. To the glory of God. Full of God, put your hands together for Jesus. Après tout cela, nous sommes revenus à la maison, tout se passait bien. La plaie s'est cicatrisée. He said after that operation, they got back home and everything continued normally and the injury healed properly. Et l'une des aides soignantes qui était là, quand le docteur a vu la grossesse extra utérus et se plaignait, elle a appelé ma femme pour la demander si effectivement elle est revenue à la maison. He says that one of the nurses that were there and was murmuring had to call his wife after she had gotten home to make sure she had gotten home and she was fine. Elle est revenue à la maison sain et sauf. And he's saying again that my wife got back home safely. Après cela, on s'est confié à un gynécologue pour de meilleurs traitements. Elle a eu à faire toutes les analyses possibles. Elle a pris les médicaments et pourtant, elle a eu toujours du mal à concevoir. So after that, Zot, a gynecologist for a better treatment, she took all the pills, she took all the treatment, but yet she was having difficulties in conceiving. C'est de là, moi-même, le docteur m'a dit que je dois faire des analyses, ce que j'ai fait, mais mes analyses ont montré qu'il n'y a aucun problème à mon niveau. So that was when the doctor also advised me to undergo some tests and he says he did the test and it revealed that there was no problem at his own end. C'est de là nous sommes venus à l'église de toutes les nations synagogues pour chercher la face de Dieu et nous avons vu vraiment la face de Dieu. He says that was when he decided to come to the synagogue of one nation to seek the face of God and really they saw the face of God. Before you go further, your wife mentioned during her testimony about having a resource negative challenge. What can you tell us about that? Avant de continuer avec votre témoignage, votre femme a dit alors qu'elle partageait son témoignage qu'elle avait eu des problèmes de ressources négatives. Qu'est-ce que vous avez à dire à propos de cela? Oui, elle a mentionné ça. Une femme qui a de facteurs résus négatifs au moins doit recevoir, doit recevoir une éjection d'antidé que les médecins ont oublié d'injecter au moment où elle a été opérée. He confirms what his wife had said that yes, after the operation, his wife, which, who is a resource negative mother, married to a resource positive man, is supposed to be injected an antidé injection, which is an immunoglobin injection given to women to prevent them from not, uh, from, from the antibodies from fighting the next baby. But the doctors forget to inject her with that injection. Donc, cela a fait que elle a eu du mal à concevoir. Et même, le docteur a dit, le gynécologue à qui on s'est confié a dit qu'elle a des kisses ovariens au niveau des ovaires. Donc, avec ces deux problèmes, elle n'arrive pas à concevoir. He said that was what contributed to his wife's inability to conceive. The gynecologist also revealed that his wife had ovarian cysts on her two ovaries. So these were the two challenges that were preventing his wife from conceiving. Quand nous sommes venus ici, à synagogue église de toutes les nations, nous avons été placés à la ligne de prière le vendredi, 20, le vendredi 1er décembre 2023. So he said... They came here to the Synagogue of All Nations and they were placed on the prayer line on Friday, 1st of December, 2023, to be precise. Nous avons été touchés par l'évangéliste et après cela, quand nous sommes retournés à la maison, en avril passé, peuple de Dieu, elle a fait le test de grossesse et cela a montré qu'elle est vraiment enceinte. Gloire à Dieu People of God, if you're not clapping, you're not getting it right. Put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. He says, when they came to the prayer line, they, were, they received the church. They both received the church from an evangelist. And when they went back home on April this year, she ran a test and it came out positive that she's pregnant. People of God, don't stop clapping. Put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. Donc, 
Dieu a changé mon nom. Dieu a changé le nom de ma femme. Comme l'année 2024 a été une année d'un nouveau nom, Dieu a changé notre nom. He says God has changed his name now. God has also changed the name of his wife. Like the year 2024 has been a, name, a year of a new name, God has given him a new name to the glory of God. Pull of God, put your hands together. And now, tell us, how do you feel now that you are going to be a father any moment from now? Comment est-ce que vous vous sentez maintenant avec le fait que vous allez devenir un père d'un instant à l'autre? Je suis très heureux, joyeux d'être papa maintenant. Et pour la gloire de Dieu, nous reviendrons dans quelques mois avec le bébé pour témoigner. He says now he is happy, he is joyful, and very soon, in a few months from now, he's coming back with his baby to share a bigger testimony to the glory of God. Dites nous avec, uh, tell us with what God has done in your life, what word of encouragement you have to those listening to you. Dites nous avec ce que Dieu a fait dans votre vie, quel encouragement, quel conseil avez-vous pour ceux qui vous écoutent? Peuple de Dieu, ceux qui m'écoutent en ce moment, j'ai eu un conseil de mon papa dans le Seigneur, prophète Tibi Joshua. Il m'a dit de ne pas interpréter le silence de Dieu comme un rejet. Je redonne encore ce même conseil à toute personne qui m'écoute en ce moment. N'interprétez pas le silence de Dieu comme un rejet. Soyez patient pour le futur. Full of God, he says that as advice to those listening to him, he's going to share the same advice he received from his father in the Lord, Prophet Tib Joshua. He says, he was told not to interpret God's silence for rejection. And then now he's saying again to those listening to him, do not take God's silence for rejection. And indeed, just as God has met this man at the point of his need and changed his name and given him a new name, your own case will not be an exception today in Jesus' name. If you believe that, put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. Espectadores de todo el mundo, acabamos de escuchar el maravilloso testimonio de esta pareja. Ellos vienen de la República de Benin y vienen a testificar del fruto del vientre, de un testimonio de fruto del vientre, porque Dios Todopoderoso les dio la gracia de poder concebir. Nos cuentan que... El bebé estaba fuera del vientre, fuera de la matriz y por tanto ella no pudo concebir, perdió ese embarazo. Después los médicos le dijeron que había tenido quistes en los ovarios y, y habían dificultades que le impedían tener a ese hijo que ellos tanto deseaban. Sin embargo, cuando vinieron aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones, el evangelista oró por ellos. Ellos recibieron esa bendición y esa victoria. Ahora ella está aquí embarazada y ambos testifican y le dan toda la gloria a Dios porque en ese momento de tristeza Dios transformó esa tristeza en alegría y nos aconsejan confiar en Dios y creer en Él, como decía el profeta Tibi Joshua no malinterpretar el silencio de Dios como un rechazo, sino seguir confiando y perseverando. Espectador, permanece conectado. Once again, let's pray together beautifully for Jesus. of anger, how do you operate? Destruction is the main key. So what are the things you have done to him? I removed him from you know who. He no longer worships God. Who else is in this body? The spirit of destruction covers all. Esprit de destruction. So as the spirit of destruction, what are the things you push him to do? Majorly anger. So what happens anytime he's angry? 
He talks to people and yeah. The way I trained him to talk to people. <laughs> what have we done to his family? <laughs> the family is okay. I just need only him. How did you answer him? Social media. It's time for you to go. Fire of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Fire out of my body. Fire in the name of Jesus. Your head. Fire. Your hands. Fire. Your legs. Fire out of my body. Fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. Observe the deliverance of Jesus. Constate la réaction instantanée. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Ah. Ma perte. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. Vemos a este hombre recibir su liberación en el nombre de Jesús. Out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Rise up, you are free. Declarado libre en el nombre de Jesús. Gloire a Dieu, les libres de l'emprise, l'esprit de colère, l'esprit de destruction pour la gloire de Dieu. Thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Hallelujah, the brother is right here in our midst. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Please tell us your name, the people beside you, and your testimony. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Mr. Joshua, and the people standing beside me are my family, my mom, and my eldest brother. It all started when I was in primary school, down to my secondary education. I was very blatantly aggressive. I talked to people anyhow. I eat a lot of things that was not of God. While I was in secondary school, I, I joined the choir in school, but I was not very productive because of my arrogant behavior towards people. So, before leaving school, a lot of things happened. I was still in God. I gained admission into the university. In my first year, I was in a choir in a church. And then a lot of things happened while I was in Christ, as at that time. People would just stay in choir section and then they would talk to me anyhow. And anytime I'm spoken to anyhow, there's no little thing you would tell me or say to me that will not make me lash out, that will not make me say things to the person back in 10,000 fold. I was, even, in, even as a little thing that the person would say to me, I would say bad things to the person. So while in school, I left church. I left church entirely. I told myself that, okay, ah, these things, the way they are treating me in these churches I'm going to, is it because of the way I'm behaving? I was asking myself too many questions. I didn't know where the problem was coming from entirely. So, 200 level, 300 level, I started discouraging people from going to church. I studied theater art, so I used that opportunity to tell my juniors in school, I'll be like, which church are you going to? Is there any church you want to go to? There's no church you'll go to that will convince me that you're going to anything you're doing there. So you are not going anywhere. I will set rehearsals purposely on times that I know that people are in church so that they will not go there. They will not go to church. They will come to school purposely. So I discouraged a lot of people from going to church because I was also, you know, discouraged from church and then I removed people entirely out of the gospel sector. So anger became my drive. Like there's nothing that anything happens anywhere that I will not get angry. It applied to my family. My mom is here 
Sometimes says she's even afraid to even send me. She will tell me one thing 20 times before I will even do it with 99 I beg. And there's so many things that happen. There are so many things that happened in the house. I don't fear anybody, no matter who you think you are. There's nothing you will say to me that will change my perspective of you. I spoke to my elder brothers anyhow. I have two elder brothers. I spoke to my elder brothers anyhow, my dad, my mom. Everybody in the house, I became like one kind of dog inside the house. It got to a time there, my other brother could not take it anymore. So he took a plank and chased me out of the house. I ran outside the gates, creating a scene in front of the house. And the neighbors were, I think that was last, um, last three years, December or so. I started creating a scene outside. Everybody was now coming to the house to see what was happening and the rest. It really tore me apart with my family. So... I went back to school. Getting to school, my anger also affected my friends. Anybody that was close to me, I had close to like five to six friends. They are no more with me because of my character and my uh, and the anger that was in me. Sometimes, sometimes, my friend told me some things to you know confide in me and everything. And then he said something one day that made me angry. In an open group, in a public group, I said very, very hurtful words to that person. Till today, I and that person is no more talking because of, because of my anger, because of everything that is going on with me. Even my lecturers, there are some, some of my lecturers that were very cool with me. Because of that fear of not fearing anybody, I spoke to them anyhow, the way I wanted, and then it really created a rift between me and my, my lecturers. So on coming to church, on coming back from holiday rather, I came back to the house last October, and then I think I was in the house, my mom was also around on Saturday. I told her that ah, you're going to church because I was coming from... I was coming from, I was in a church before rather, and then I could not come down here because of the distance. Because of the distance. And then I told her that, okay, I'm coming to church. I'm coming to church um, with her the next week. But before that, leaving God and leaving Christ entirely made me, you know, broke. When I was in Christ, I used to I used to receive blessings upon blessings before. Like there was no Sunday I went to church and God would not bless me. But after people telling me that uh-uh, this is your voice where you they sing, self. Nah, God, you they use them for. Why you know they go sing for outside maybe they get better money, maybe they sing for God. So I started keying into their words and then I stopped going to church entirely, even also discouraging people. So after going for karaoke, singing in uh, open spaces, getting money. It's like the money comes with one special insult like this. They, every time I collect any money, new problem comes. Fresh one. Like they just picked it. We just come. Like from the beginning of this year, from January, February down to August, I did not have peace in my life. Maybe I finished singing somewhere. The next two days... Is either the money enter debts or so many things were just happening. It was not coming with blessing at all to me. So I started looking at these things. I was like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I could not understand what was going on at all. So I think I met a girl in school and then she told me that, ah, no, she was making a call rather. And then I heard her making a call. So I told her that, ah, and this is the way they do. Show me way now. Then she, you know, puts me through on how to pimp people to each other. So I was like the HQ of delivering girls to people. If it goes for work, the person comes back and I get my own cuts. So getting broke in that sense of not being in God, I was trying to use that sense to survive because my elder brothers and my mom, they are my support system. So I didn't want to be disturbing them every time that Ah, I need this, I need it, because they also have things to do, so I didn't want to be disturbing them. Even my dad is also my support system, but I didn't want to be disturbing. I wanted to be a man of my own, so 
I was like, okay, I will make it on myself. So I didn't want to be stopping them. So that way I was, you know, getting money, but it was still coming with problem. Like they remove it from oven. It was still coming with problem. So in that sense, instead of because I live in a, I stay in a school where like almost everybody knows everybody. So they don't send their photos to me. I started going to the internet to, you know, look for photos that look like them. To, you know, show the people that want to look like, want to, I don't know if you understand me, that want to get, yes, yeah, so I was going to the internet to look for people. I sent to the guys that, okay, this is how this person looks. So I, I started doing that. But after that, I started, you know, relenting from that side, looking for other means to get money. Meanwhile, the anger was still there playing football in my life very, very well. So, coming to Lagos this holiday, I have I, not been in Lagos since two years because of school, so I came to Lagos. I was like, okay, let me come and see my mom. And then my mom always comes to church, but we could not come because of the distance. And then I told her that, ah, you're going to, you're going to our home church. Ah, I'll follow you. Then I followed her to church that Sunday. I did not know any of this thing would happen. So I think I went to the canteen. I came back. I sat in my seat before the evangelists started coming out to minister prayers to people. I was in my chair. I think it's that side. I started feeling this heat in my body. Like I was sweating anyhow. Like this one was not normal sweat. I knew it was not normal sweat. I was sweating profusely. I started having migraines. I've never had migraine in my life. But I came there. I sat down. I don't know what was happening. But everything just started making me feel uncomfortable. And then before you know, the Spirit of God touched me. And then I was just blank. I didn't know what was happening. I did not know what was happening. But before anything, I just found myself here. I woke up, like, looking at my clothes and my shoes on the floor. I was so shocked and surprised. But I give God all the glory and all the honor for taking away the spirit of anger out of me. So I think um, before we came here uh, on Saturday to Sunday, before coming to church, it's like my mother was doing this on purpose. She was just shouting at me purposely. If it was before, I would have lashed out blatantly, like nothing did happen. Anybody who won't come, we collect. I could tell and say, see, as be. But I was not feeling that way anymore. She started shouting at me. I was like, are you doing this? What is this? I don't know what was happening, why she was doing it, but I was just calm. I don't know where that calmness came from. I, me, like this, in humility, said, Mommy, why are you doing this thing? I have never sounded so low before. And then I gave her what she was looking for. And then, you know, we came to church. I just give God all the glory and the honor for helping my life. Shall we put our hands together and clap for Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, the evidence of Jesus is life's change. So since last week that you received your deliverance, what has been, how has been life for you? Your relationship with your family, your brother, how has it been? My relationship with my other brother, most especially, he's like, he's my look, I call him my lookalike. I call him my carbon copy. I like, I don't know. But we've never had, uh, we, there's no time that we just sit and talk. That time we, it was like talk of all, we know the jam. But ever since, I always, now this season, I always want to be closer to him. As I'm even going back to school now, I'm even feeling that, ah, I'm leaving my, before, if I hear that he's at home, I'll say I'm not coming home. I'll say I'm not, but now I want to be closer to him. I want to be closer to my family. We're all in peace. I give God all the glory for that. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. We thank God Almighty for what he has done in your life. Millions of thanks are not enough for this wonderful deliverance that he has brought to you and your family. Going by your previous experience, if you were to advise the youth out there, what would be your word of advice? 
Firstly, my word of advice is to keep her entirely, especially the youths. Do not use your body for money. Do not use yourself. Do not give out your body for money. It is not good. It is not godly. And secondly, I want to tell the youth, like, you should be humble. No matter the place you are, those people there that want to frustrate you are looking for a way to put you out. Act like you don't know anything. Act like you are, you are, you are, you are dumbfounded. Act like you don't know anything. Be a godlike person. Be humble wherever you are. Let humility speak for you. And it will help you wherever you are going. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Let us hear from the woman beside you. Now you're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Please tell us your name, the people beside you, and your testimony. My name is Doris Francis Telumu. I came all the way from Delta State. People beside me is my, my children. This is the first one, and that boy is the fourth child. I thank God Almighty for all that I've done in my son's life. He all started when he was in secondary school. Arrogant, stubbornness, disobedience, unfaithfulness. I look at him and say, Joshua, you were born in this church. Why is this spirit behind you like this? Joshua refused to change. He continued. He continued. One faithful day, my senior son said he will beat the evil spirit out of him. That is the only way. That he cannot continue to tolerate this boy any longer. What kind of a son is this? Why are you behaving like this? You make me feel embarrassment. Each time they talk to you, run out of the gate, shout, I'm screaming. The first place started on you, you will go and carry a knife. Nobody will come close to you. Anybody that comes close, he will stab the person and stab himself. I told my son, this is not ordinary. Don't go close to him any longer. He needs deliverance. No matter how the deliverance will take, take long. One day, one day, surely he must come. So throughout this year and last year, I've been praying, fasting, asking God to visit my children. Enough is enough for these challenges. These challenges come from nowhere, through Joshua. Why everywhere Joshua, Joshua, Joshua? I am tired. Sometimes I will become afraid. Sometimes I will cry. Sometimes I will not say, what kind of behavior is this? What are you doing to yourself? He will not answer you. One faithful day, you were doing Christmas. Everybody was preparing for Christmas. We are happy. Before you know it, Joshua straight in leg and fall his senior sister down. Started giving the sister blow. What did this girl do to you? The senior son, ah, we cannot leave this boy. Oh. Then rush him. Started beating him. He ran out of the gate. You people don't like me. I will kill myself. This man became me too much. I don't know why they hate me in this house so much. After some time, the spirit calmed down. He will not go to the sister and say, sorry. I don't know what come over me. So that spirit of hunger, so much hunger, is too much for him. Nobody will hold him. In fact, if you are like 10, hold Joshua, you will fall the 10 of people up down, the way the spirit starts. So he has been locked there for long, tormenting him. I've been praying, because that is the only thing that has disturbed him among all my children. Joshua, for spirit of hunger. The many ones, they are calm. They are good, but Joshua, when the spirit comes, you dare not to come close to him. So last Sunday, I was preparing to come to the church. He went to living faith last week, last two weeks. He said, Mommy, do you want to go to our church? I said, yes. Are you ready to follow me to your church? It's our church. He said, yes, I will follow you. I said, good. We prepared. I was rushing to the church so that I would not be late. Joshua, be fast too, so that you enter where they are taking you to enter. You follow the usher instruction. They will lead you to where you will enter. So I was in the church here. Before I raised my face, I see somebody that dragging, they were dragging. I said, ah, ah, it has happened, no. <laughs> God, now so you be. Ah, you can do it for me like this. Hey, thank you, Jesus. That was my response. I said, yes, this is what I was praying for all my life. That among all my children, Joshua will be delivered for spirit of hunger. Because when that hunger come upon him, he won't look you whether you are anything to him. He can answer you the way he wants to answer you. Even when I want to cook, I say, Joshua, I want to cook. Oh, please come to me. Come and meet me in the kitchen so that you will assist me. I call Joshua three times. He would not answer me. Joshua, Joshua. He look at me. He bring his face down. He went to the room and lie down. 
I look and say, this spirit has started again. No, I won't talk. I prepare the food. Joshua, Joshua, the, sweet, the food is ready. I want me to finish cooking. I say, yes, eat. It's my duty to cook for you as my son. Eat. Do you happen that you are eating this food? Ah, mommy, forgive me. Oh. I don't know what to come over me. I hear you, but I refuse to answer you. So I thank God of TB Joshua. I thank God of Evelyn Joshua. I thank the evangelist. I thank all Snagam Center of Information for your help and for your support. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? <laughs> we thank God Almighty for all that he has done for you. So we want to ask you, Seeing that your son has been delivered since last week Sunday, one, how do you feel? And what are the changes that you have noticed in his life? I am very, very 100% happy. Every day I wake up, I will smile. Every day I wake up, I will smile. I keep happy all the time. The changes I'm seeing him, he remain calm. When you call you like usual, I call you Joshua, he will answer you. Mommy, do you call me? Even if you want to try to quarrel with him, he remain calm. He will smile. He will not utter a word. He will not say the word. Since then, he has been changed for good. He has been changed for the deliverance has been taking place. I thank God for his mercy. Shall we put our hands together and clap for Jesus? Yes. As a mother, going by what you have seen so far, if you are to advise the parents out there, what is your word of encouragement? Advise parents when you see changes in your children. Bring them to the church. That is the only solution. You fight from here till tomorrow till next tomorrow, the problem will keep remain there. But since he came to the church and received deliverance, my family and my household are free. I'm happy. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Tell your neighbor, God is the answer. I can't hear you say, God is the answer. Yes, as Prophet T.B. Joshua says, that Jesus Christ is the answer to all fundamental issues of life. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Let us hear from the young man. So you're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. You tell us your name and what can you say concerning what God Almighty has done for your family. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Children of God, Emmanuel. The God that has visited my family will visit you today in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Joseph Onduna Telomo, uh, a.k.a. Biggie Brown. I'm a musical artist, and the woman standing beside me here is my mother, and the man standing beside my mother is my younger brother. We are five in number, and I'm the first. He's the fourth, and... Imagine the fourth child of a family threatening the first child with all fire and brimstone. This is Africa. We have rule. Uh, but some things you can bear, there are some things you cannot bear. Uh, sometimes I just look at my mom and said, I, I don't know what's going on, but if you go by the way you look at things, perhaps by now, Maybe I would have been jailed because sometimes I take things to my, uh, I take law into my hands to fight him physically. There are times where he would have the boldness to talk to my mom with all anger. And being the first child, I won't just sit and fold my arms like that. There are times where he would talk to my dad in the same manner. And if you look at him, you would see that this is not ordinary because he's supposed to be uh, uh, remorseful, but he's not. You see it in his eyes. His eyes will change. He will be so angry as if he can tear anyone that comes his way. There was a certain time we had a misunderstanding. What was the misunderstanding? I, I was overhearing my mom calling his name more than five times, and he's not far away, just like Okay, this lady standing beside me, let's say some meters away, you hear your mom calling your own younger one and he's playing deaf ears. I was like, aren't you hearing your name? Why are you quiet? He then lashed at me. I was like, uh-uh. Now me, you they talk to. He was bold enough to say, now you are they talk to. I said, ah, this one don't pass power. I said, mom, if I no beat this boy today, my mind no go cool down. 
Um, see my mom, sometimes we argue and she falls down. And it's to show that it's, this is really, really not ordinary. So I'll chase him around the compound looking for a way to grab him and enjoy him. But I'll be unable to do that because as he's, as he's tall and huge like that, he's also fast. He can run. So he will run out of the gates. He will go and start facing the compound, yelling out loud, calling the attention of all the old neighbors, calling my mother names, calling my dad names, calling me names, insulting me, my career, insulting everything, using all manner of course words. And this continue on and on. And sometimes he will stay like that outside and say he's not going to come into the house again, uh, that he wants to pack his things from the house. And uh, you'll be hearing how he'll be, he'll be going so close to neighbors that don't say hello and they will want to house him. You know that kind of thing that will be bringing division in between uh, a, a family. And there are times he will just pick up knife when we are having misunderstanding that he will tear anybody that comes his way and tear me at the same time. And it's just as if among all his seniors, since I'm the eldest, I'm the only one that can speak up to him because the rest are also afraid of him, including his elder sister that is uh, 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 older than him. So, he will go straight to where there are uh, valuable items like TVs, dining table, glass dining tables, items that if you make attempt to come and uh, 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 stop him, he will break them, and those things are quite expensive, so we just respect ourselves. So, uh, I, I, I think the spirit using him is not ordinary. These are the things that... <laughs> oh, my God. There was a time that I was able to get hold of him, that I couldn't hold any item. And when I went physical on him, gave him some few punches, and I slapped him, he fell. I thought he was dead. <laughs> I was staring at him. The love in me started shaking him. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. He fainted. That's the long and short of it. Then he was admitted. The doctor said that the slap I gave to him injured his ear, and they had to put white to rule in his ear. So, but knowing that, knowing that I could do something like that, the doctor said, and whenever he misbehaves, that he doesn't know what I'm tolerating, but I shouldn't go physical with him so that I would not commit a crime tomorrow that the world will not hear. They will think it's another thing. So, knowing that he saw that I made that proclamation, he has taken that as an opportunity that nobody can beat him. He entered another level. So there was a certain day, he is a good chorister. In fact, I took it upon myself to attend the church that he sings for. I went there, they were singing, he was singing. I was in the congregation, I was not moved because I know he's singing. So people were feeling the anointing. I see some people closing eyes, some crying, some falling. I was looking at him like, no be this one. I said, well, let's, let's see. So when I noticed that, there is a part of him that he knows what to do when it is his duty. There is there's another part of him that we see in the house, not the ones that they see outside. So on a certain Sunday, he, I don't know, the spirit came upon him. And that day, he, he talked to me anyhow. After speaking to my mom, sometimes he will not greet my mom. And if I ask him, uh -uh, you wake up in the morning and you see your parents. This is Africa. You see your parents, you will not acknowledge to say good morning. He said, me, can you tell her that thing? Eh? Me, can you tell you this thing? I look left, look right. I, I didn't know what to do next. So the next step I took was to go straight to his room. He was still with uh, uh, the top of his uh, uh, Sunday wear. So I, I approached him. He thought maybe I wanted to hit him because he knew that the doctor don't say, me, can you touch me? Uh, so he was thinking maybe I want to come and hit him. And I didn't want to do so. So I just stood in front of him. I tore his dress tore his trouser, I went straight to his room, brought out all his best wear in between the trousers. I was tearing them beyond repair so that I could get to him. Some of them I soaked inside water. Some of them I threw above the fence. I just made him uncomfortable to the way that he missed that Sunday service. I say, the people that you are going there to go and bless today, go and bless them. Let me see. I'm standing right here. So you can imagine how to fight anger in somebody that He's a close member of your family, and you think maybe fighting it like that can just stop it. I tried all I could till I made a vow on a certain day and said, 
you shall look at me and making a vow today that you will never in your life be my brother because of what you have done. So, with, we thank God Almighty, but today it has become a thing of the past. God Almighty has done wonderful thing in this family. It is a glorious thing. So we thank God Almighty because we know you have so much to say. But going by what you have seen so far, like knowing that this that has happened to him was not natural, and seeing that he has been delivered since last week's Sunday, what are the changes that you have seen in the life of your brother? Uh, sometimes I, I, I used to think maybe he's female because if there is anything he knows how to do well is to act. So, but ever since his deliverance, to be honest, he has been being so nice to me, playing with me, coming to ask me things that on a normal, if we sit, we don't talk. It's just sit his own and I sit my own without saying a word, but Ever since his deliverance, he has been coming close to seek consent, like the way younger brother is supposed to ask his senior brother information. He has been nice. He has been calm. I see a different person in him, but I don't know how long. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We all know that what God Almighty does is permanent. We want to assure you that God Almighty has come into this family. Just as you have seen, you have heard from your mom and you have heard from your brother. That when God Almighty comes into our life, it puts an end to our past life and gives birth to a wonderful future. So seeing the changes so far, what about the vow that you have made? How do you see now? What do you want to say concerning the vow that you have made? You know, Satan... Brought, bring, brought challenges to this home to a level where anger will make you do and say some things. I, I, I want to believe that I said all of that as a result of anger because the kind of love he's showing me now is not the kind of love I will make such an utterance. So I forgive him. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Yes. Our final law prophet T.B. Joshua says, Forgiveness makes future possible. And we thank God Almighty for your life and that of your family. So seeing what God Almighty has done for you, what will be your word of advice to those listening to you now? To those, to those listening to me all over the world, I want to share from my experience that though it might be hot inside and we all pretend outside, if you can run to God, hold on to God because... There's something I learned from my mom. She pray at all times. She pray when I mean pray at all times. She, she, she prays morning, prays afternoon, prays in the night for all of us that are her children. And keying into that, she believes that God can do it, and God has done it, and God will do it for you today in Jesus' name. Shall we put our hands together and clap for Jesus? Y acabamos de escuchar el maravilloso, precioso testimonio de Joshua que viene acompañado de su mamá y de su hermano mayor. Joshua era un niño que solía ir a la iglesia a caminar pegadito de Dios, pero en un momento dado de su vida se enganchó a las redes sociales, empezó a desarrollar un fuerte espíritu de enojo, eh, se peleaba con su hermano incluso físicamente, hablaba mal, trataba mal a su mamá, a su papá, no quería estar cerca de la familia, dejó de ir a la iglesia, incluso aconsejaba a los demás jóvenes que no fueran a la iglesia. El carácter de Joshua Camplo completamente debido a este espíritu de enojo tan fuerte. Eh, finalmente su mamá eh, como buena madre, eh, caminando en los caminos de Dios, ella oraba para que Joshua viera otra vez la luz de Dios y fuera libre. Y ese momento llegó. Ellos vinieron a la Escoan y como vemos en pantalla, Dios localizó el caso de Joshua y él fue libre completamente de ese espíritu de enojo que estaba destruyendo su vida. Hoy ya libre, la paz ha vuelto a su hogar. Él tiene una relación maravillosa con su familia, quiere, desea invertir tiempo con su familia y nos aconseja que cualquiera que sea el problema en la vida, especialmente de los jóvenes, sean humildes, sean humildes, humíllense ante Dios. 
Dios y cuídense, guárdense, no usen sus cuerpos para sacar dinero, no se enfoquen en el dinero, sino en Dios, porque Dios es la respuesta a todos los asuntos fundamentales de la vida. La mamá de Joshua y el hermano vienen a dar la gloria a Dios por esta liberación, ya que Dios ha reconstruido, reformado y traído esta familia de nuevo a los pies de Cristo. Damos toda la gloria a Dios. Venid a escuchar el maravilloso testimonio de esta familia. Joshua, qui a été délivré, comme vous pouvez le voir sur vos écrans, d'un esprit qui est rentré en lui, euh, au travers des réseaux sociaux, un esprit de colère. Il dit que, en tant que jeune homme, il était dans la chorale et que, dû à cette colère qu'il avait, il a été, il, il a quitté la chorale et, lorsqu'il est parti pour l'université, il a abandonné l'église complètement. Et il dit que, il avait, il, il avait un mauvais comportement envers euh, ses amis, il ne pouvait pas garder de relations amicales parce qu'il était très en colère et qu'il avait, euh, il était très mal poli envers euh, tout son entourage, même envers ses professeurs. Il dit qu'il est arrivé jusqu'à un point où il essaie de décourager les personnes d'aller à l'église. Il était en tant que coordinateur euh, d'art théâtral. Il mettait ses horaires de, pra de, 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 de pratique à, aux horaires de l'église pour justement qu'il ne puisse pas euh, partir se rendre à l'église. Il dit que tout allait il, il était même jusqu'au il allait jusqu'au point de euh, d'avoir un rôle de proxénète en connectant les hommes et les femmes pour qu'ils puissent euh, avoir une vie euh, de débauche donc il, il est finalement venu à la synagogue des des nations avec sa mère et, ce, et il a reçu sa délivrance comme vous pouvez le voir sur vos écrans il est complètement libre de cet esprit de colère et d'arrogance son frère témoigne de son mauvais caractère et de son impolitesse envers lui envers les membres de sa famille et donc il est ici pour rendre gloire à Dieu pour sa délivrance totale et complète au nom de Jésus Christ We can see you raising up your hand What do you want to tell us? Um, I would like to apologize to my family, my mom, my brother. I am so sorry for all the things I've been doing. I'm so sorry. Sorry. We thank God Almighty for what he has done in this family. In this family will never be the same again. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Estamos viendo este hermoso momento en el que Joshua pide perdón públicamente a su familia por todo lo que Satanás le obligó a hacer por ese espíritu de enojo y la destrucción que, eh, que causó. Damos toda la gloria a Dios por esta reconciliación. Donc, comme vous pouvez voir, Joshua vient de demander, présenter ses excuses, à demander pardon à sa famille, euh, et qui dit que c'était pas lui, mais il demande pardon à sa famille pour tout le mal qu'il a pu faire dans le passé. And um, I would also like to sing for the people of God. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never fail, you never change. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You are too faithful to fail me. Oh, Jesus, you are too faithful to disappoint me. Yeah, you've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Yeah. You are so faithful to fail me. Oh, Jesus, you are too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Wow, that was, that was amazing. We thank God Almighty for your life and that of your family. We just want to advise you. Just as the Bible says that Christ has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And we thank God Almighty through his deliverance and support about this wonderful reconciliation in your life and family. I want you to know that better is not good enough. The best is yet to come in Jesus' name. We want to quickly advise you as well. That you have been delivered through Christ's word. So you should go and be ruled by his word. We pray that God Almighty will give you the infinite grace to do so in Jesus' name.
Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty.